I have covered five Devils games at the Prudential Center, and I still have not seen a happy locker room. The month of December has not been too kind towards the Devils. We have a lot to talk about in today's episode of Locked on Devils. Buckle up, everybody. I hate it here. You're Locked on Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked On Devils with Trey Matthews. Elias scores! Oh, Steven stepped up, nailed him. rodor has got the puck. What a shot. The Devils win the Stanley Cup. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on Locked On Network. I'm your host, college hockey play-by-play announcer, and also Dell's right for Pucks and Pitchforks, Trey Matthews. So, the month of December has not been too kind towards the Devils because... This month, the Devils have a record of 3-7-2, and two, and I believe there's only two teams that are performing worse than them during this month. So I can't wait until January rolls around because it's time for the New Jersey Devils to just turn the calendar a little bit. Obviously, it'll be the new year, 2023, but yeah, the, the month of December has not been too kind to them, and it's just so disappointing because talk about a fall from grace a little bit because... Just last month, they were on a 13-game heater, and now they're just losing and just not finding any consistency, and they still got to play the Carolina Hurricanes. They still got to play the Pittsburgh Penguins, so we'll see how it goes, but this game was just a heartbreaker for the Devils, dropping this one to the Boston Bruins by a score of 3-1. to So here's how we're going to construct today's episode. So I'm going to give you guys a game recap and what I saw from the press box, and then I'll share some sound bites from Eric Halla, Jonas Siegenthaler, and Lindy Ruff. And then I'm going to give you guys my final thoughts. I will obviously give the Devils a letter grade, compare the stats, and tell you where the Devils have to go from here. Because quite honestly, I think these next two games for them will be crucial just to how tight the Metro is. So let's get started with this game recap, shall we? Nico Heischer took a nasty hit from Charlie McAvoy to uh, start the game and actually was taken back to the locker room, but returned moments later. So a little bit of a scary sight right there. But luckily, like I said, Nico Heischer, he was fine. Might have just gotten a little dinged up. And in that sort of way, I was hoping for Nikita Holtuk to hunt down McAvoy and just try to teach him some manners, but didn't happen. But it seems like Brendan Smith always has Nico Heischer's back. So moving on, Miles Wood was robbed point blank by Allmark on a breakaway. That wasn't the only example because about 90 seconds later, the Devils seemed to have had three more high danger opportunities against Allmark and could not finish once again. Siegenthaler goes to the box for tripping. That was the real first test for the night of the Devils. And if my memory serves me well, there was going to be a double high sticking call until the refs assessed Damon Severson with high sticking his own teammate after video replay was used. So complete boneheaded move by Damon Severson once again. And I'm just thinking in my head, I'm like, oh, Severson, there he goes back at it. But I think the main thing from period number one was that Kevin Ball got into his first career NHL fight. So he got into it with Trent Frederick. And I love to see the assertiveness. And in a way, I feel as though he was kind of sticking up for Nico Heischer in some sort of manner, just because I I know it wasn't Charlie McAvoy. But at the same time, you're sending a message to one of the best teams in the NHL. No, in fact, the best team in the NHL saying, we're not going to back down. We're not afraid of you. And we are going to throw our weight around. And this is going to be a tough battle for you. So I just love that Kevin Ball got into it with Frederick, but I'm going to be completely honest. He did lose that fight because as it wore on, just seemed like Kevin Ball lost fatigue. He didn't go down to the rank, but at the same time, you just saw that Frederick just had the upper hand, but it's the kid's first NHL fight. So I'm not really going to uh, uh, condescend to him in that sort of way. And Lindy Ruff brought it up in post game saying that he was proud of Ball in that sort of way. So I guess ball for me. (laughs) That's a Post Malone song for any of you who don't uh, get the pop culture reference. But moving on, the Devils continue to get goal lead as the puck almost went past the goal line. Count them three times, but 
Omar was just making save after save after save. And it, it just seems like it's the same movie with the New Jersey Devils, which is they create good opportunities for themselves. They get uh, off good shot selections, but it seems like they cannot finish. It, it, it seems like that's what the narrative has been for the entire month of December, which is the New Devils creating good offense for themselves, but they're not capitalizing on them. So at one point, Jack Hughes was on a two-on-one and he couldn't finish his shot and slammed his stick out of frustration. So you know that the emotions are starting to just trickle into the heads of the Devils. And I really don't want to see that, but it's just another example of the Devils somehow, some way defeating themselves. And the same situation repeated itself within the final 30-second frame. Devils couldn't gather the rebound and nudge the puck past Olmark. And it's, I'm just like, come on, Devils. You don't know how many more opportunities you're going to have on Olmark. So you really got to capitalize on them when you're given that sort of chance. So that was a little frustrating to see because, once again, the Devils led the shots on goal category 14-9. to nine. They started off pretty fast but slowed down as the period progressed. I'm just like, okay, the Devils have a legitimate chance. Once again, they're putting themselves in the position to win, but somehow, some way, they can just not uh, finish their shots. Now, here's the thing. I will give credit where credit is due. Olmark is one of the best goalies uh, in the league right now, so it's just like the Devils are running into a hot goalie, but this can't continue to happen. You really got to figure it out because come playoff time, if we do get to that point, it's, it's so funny that I go from, when to now if uh you, it, it's no excuse the excuse will start to wane and wane you got to finish your shots and i get that they're in a rut i get it's kind of getting into their heads a little bit but that cannot continue to happen so going on into period number two i just want to say vtech vanacek did a way better job than mckenzie blackwood did to start period number two because remember in the previous game against the boston bruins once again what killed the new jersey devils they had one of their worst second periods of the entire year. In fact, I'm going to go on a limb and say that was one of their worst performing periods the entire season, not just second periods, but uh, digressing a little bit. What I'm just trying to get at is that Mackenzie Blackwood, he played a good share of the Devils' loss against the Boston Bruins uh, before the Christmas break. But Vitek Vanacek, he held his own quite nicely. But Dawson Mercer, he got robbed like two or three times by Allmark on the same offensive possession. And I'm just like, oh, my God, like, just locate the shot. You were just inches away. You could just hear the oohs and ahs from the Prudential Center. And I'm just I'm just thinking about it in my head. I'm like, oh, boy, if the Devils don't uh, capitalize on any opportunities that is being presented to them, this really is going to come back to bite them. So uh, they couldn't capitalize on the power play when McAvoy was asserted in interference. And then the Bruins were able to score first. Once back at full strength. Now, that was thanks to uh, Frederick. Now, a lot of people are blaming Michael McLeod in that sort of way because here's what happened. Michael McLeod, he lost his glove. He fell onto the rink, and he kind of turned the puck over in the defensive end for the Devils, and then the Bruins were able to pick it up on up, and then they go deep into the zone, and they score on VTech Vanacek. Now, here are my thoughts. It wasn't Michael McLeod's fault. Yes, but at the same time, I'm not going to say that was a boneheaded move. I'm not going to say it was a blunder on his end because, once again, he lost a piece of his equipment, which was his glove. He falls down onto the rink. He's doing his best to try to get possession of the puck and just clear it into neutral zone. So I get that a lot of people are blaming Michael McLeod in that sort of way. But when looking at the replay and just looking at the moment and the circumstances, I just don't feel comfortable saying that Michael McLeod should be blamed for letting up the first goal of the game essentially to the Bruins because quite honestly yes it was a mistake yes it was sort of a blunder but at the same time it's just like uh he's just desperately just trying to clear the puck and unfortunately he just located it wrong and like I said he's down onto the rink so he's just trying to get it out in a hurry Whereas if we compare it to like Damon Severson's turnover against the Philadelphia Flyers, Severson is on both of his feet. He has time to think. And unfortunately, he made a, a tactical error. Whereas for Michael McLeod, it's not really a tactical error. It's more of just like find the puck, clear it because you're at a disadvantage. You lost your glove. You're on the ground. So once again, yes, it was a mistake. And yes, I, I know a lot of people are giving him the blame. But at the same time, I, I just feel like in the moment, I, I don't think there's anything he would have done differently. In fact, I don't think there's anything he could have done differently because he's at a disadvantage already and he's just trying to get the puck out of the offensive end 
for the Bruins. So that way it could go back into neutral ice. Everyone could come back and reset and he can uh, regain control of his bearings. So yes, Michael McLeod, that's on him. But at the same time, let's uh, just put it into a different perspective. Now, Ball was having a little bit of a rough period, getting back-to-back penalties assessed. However, the second penalty didn't matter all that much since Bergeron got a minor for interference. It was a hard-fought battle once again that saw the Devils leading the shots on goal category and still trailing by a score of one to nothing. The good thing is that Vitek Vancek was in net because, quite honestly, some of those saves that Vancek made, Mackenzie Blackwood would have let up. So Mackenzie Blackwood is just like flip a coin. Either he's going to be good or he's going to be bad. So Mackenzie Blackwood, like I've said in prior episodes, he needs to work on his consistency. Now, let's move on to period number three. So Nico Heischer coming up clutch, tying the game almost halfway through period number three. Great feed from Fabian Zetterlin. Thomas Tatar was also credited with an assist. Heischer was just able to squeak and pass Allmark past two Bruins players. So I love that Heischer was in the right possible position. Zetterlin was able to find him. And despite being surrounded, despite being smothered, Nico Heischer, and I, quite honestly, if if that play was done again, I don't think Heischer scores. But at the same time, that's what clutch players do. And that's one of the things we've been raving about this season from Nico Heischer, which is his overall clutchness. He really does step up his game when it matters most. And I'm glad that he was able to tie the game because, like I said, the period was almost halfway done. And that's the final period of regulation. So minutes later, it was Vanacek's turn to turn up the volume at the Prudential Center as he was able to make a huge save for the Devils. I believe it came off the stick of uh, Jake DeBrusque, and he had an open net, and I don't know what the expected goal would be on that play if it was done like five more times, but I'm pretty sure it would have been high. It looked like the puck was going to cross the goal line, and at the last possible second, Vancheck was able to find the puck and just flick the puck back into play, and the game is still tied. So after that, the fans at the Rock erupted. They lost their minds, but don't worry. It was just a minor 3.1 on the Richter scale, so just a little bit of a joke because that's how loud it was, and it, it basically just shifted the whole energy in the room, and that was because of Vitek Vancheck. But unfortunately, the Bruins did score, making it a 2-1 off the stick of Bergeron, and I don't, is it a, a goal that I'm sure Vancheck would have liked to have back? Yes, but at the same time, it, it just was a night. It was just a beautifully located shot by the Bruins. So unfortunately, it's two to one. And then uh, the Devils try getting the extra attacker. And then Pavel Zaka, he got his vengeance. He got the empty netter. He put the dagger in the hearts of the New Jersey Devils. And the irony isn't lost. So Devils lose this game three to one. So I have been talking about the last couple episodes saying are these next two games must win. So I'll explain my stance momentarily, but first I know it's uh, past the holiday season and I know you probably didn't get the gift you wanted for Christmas. So why don't you go to bet online to make you some extra cash? So that way you can buy it yourself. So betonline.net is your number one source for your sports info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds, trends for every professional and amateur league out there from pro football to college bowl season to basketball and world cup. They've got it all for you at BetOnline.net. If you love sports podcasts, you can even find those at BetOnline as well. They're always the fastest, easy way to get your sports betting info. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. BetOnline, where the game starts. Please remember to gamble responsibly and visit our friends at Locked On Bets for all your betting needs there as well. Okay, so what's something I've been saying in the last couple episodes? I've been saying that... If the Devils were to hypothetically drop both games against the Boston Bruins, which they have done, I think these next games against the Pittsburgh Penguins and also the Carolina Hurricanes, I find them as must wins, quite honestly, because it is tight in the Metropolitan Division right now. So it's just like just losing more and more for the Devils. It can really put them in a bit of a pickle. It can really just uh, hinder their... Um, goal of trying to reach the playoff. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm about to put the standings up, but if you're listening on a podcast streaming service, just know there's not much wiggle room for the Devils right now. So when looking at the standings, the Carolina Hurricanes have 52 points to the good, so they, they're six points ahead of the Devils. Then the Penguins trail the Devils by two points now because the Penguins are only were only able to get one point since they lost in OT to the Detroit Red Wings, probably their worst loss of the season, like I said early on. But thank God that it was just one point and not two. So the Devils, even if they drop their next game, they're not going to fall all that much. So the Penguins, 
have 44 points. The Capitals have 44 points. Five-game win streak. Rangers, 43. Islanders, 42. So unless you're the Philadelphia Flyers or the Columbus Blue Jackets, the Metro is still up for grabs. So I think these next two uh, games for the Devils are indeed crucial because, look, I, I'm not trying to overreact here. I know that every team, especially the good teams, especially if you're a newly good team like the Devils, I know teams go on their funks. I know teams go on their losing streaks. I know teams struggle to find consistency. Like I gave the example of the Colorado Avalanche to close out their season, like the final seven games. They like they lost like five games during that span. They won one in regulation. They won one in a shootout. So I get that it happens. But at the same time, like I said, the Metro is very tight. And you and these games do add up towards the end of the year. So in my eyes, I think these next two games are crucial for the Devils. So that way they're not uh, just having their backs against the wall. They're not putting themselves in that situation to begin with. Because, look, I don't care if we're first in the Metro or not. I really don't care. At this point, I just hope that the Devils make the playoffs because that's a huge, huge upgrade based on what they were going into the season. So everyone was saying that the Devils were uh, going to miss the playoffs. They were going to be a lottery team, but they proved them wrong so far. But unfortunately, like I said, during that 2017 and 2018 year, the month of December, Devils were first in the Metro. And then uh, come the end of the season, they barely snuck into the wild card. And then they lost to the Tampa Bay Lightning in five games in the first round. So I asked Eric Holla, are the next two games for Devils, are they must wins? Here's what he had to say. Eric, it's very tight in the Metropolitan Division. Are these next two games a must win for you guys, especially with them being uh, divisional uh, series games? Yeah, must must win is a tough uh, tough word. I think it's a little bit you know too too much, but uh, you know if you look at it, it's one win in what eight games, so that ain't gonna. Be there. Okay, so he's pretty nonchalant about it, and he doesn't want to put too much pressure on himself or the team, and I respect that, but. Lindy Ruff had a little bit of a different perspective about that matter. Lindy, uh, I asked Eric this in the uh, locker room. Do you guys uh, view your next two games as must wins, considering how tight the we, Metro we is? We view every game as a must win. We we, we 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 look at every game, and from the start of the year, just sit, talked about getting better and being ready to to win on every night. Okay, so you got one who's nonchalant about it. And you got one who is just uh, determined saying every game is a must win. Here's the thing. Look, like I said, I'm not trying to overreact. I'm not trying to put too much pressure on anyone. But at the same time, the Devils cannot continue to lose because you don't know how much further they could fall in the Metro. Because the example I use is that the New York Islanders were second or third in the Metro when they came to face the Devils earlier this month. And now they're third last in the Metro. So a lot can change. They're still in it. But like I said, like you, you don't really want to be in a position where the points are starting to settle because uh, come January, like mid or late January, th I think that's when the teams will start to separate themselves. So I think the Devils, they need to get back on track. And, and it's been a free fall. It has been. And I think getting out the month of December will do wonders for them. I don't know how. I don't know why. But at the same time, I think uh, just a clean slate for them, a clean month to start off with will get them out of this funk a little bit because I said them winning against the Panthers that could do wonders for them but at the same time it's just like they, they still lost against the Boston Bruins but I said it wasn't a must win but probably a win that they probably would have had and it was a good test for them but unfortunately they kind of fell flat of that so in my eyes I think these next two games are very crucial and I think the Devils have to go out and win them so I think they are kind of must wins I get that Eric Holla doesn't want to put that pressure on himself but you really got to think about how the Metro is shaking up. You got to think about like uh, the overall seating and you got to think about like how much further could you fall since it's such a close race? Like, do you really want to linger behind in points and uh, just have trouble making it up? Because quite honestly, I don't want to be one of those infamous teams that uh, people around the NHL world just talk about how the devil's won on a 13 game win streak and somehow, some way they missed the playoffs. I don't want to go down in that history book. So they really got to get their act together against the Pittsburgh Penguins and also the Carolina Hurricanes. Luckily, the Penguins lost uh, a very tough game against the Detroit Red Wings, so that gives me some sort of hope. 
But at the same time, the Devils, I don't think they're the favorites going into the matchup, despite being ahead of the Penguins in the Metro. So it's worth mentioning in this game, the Devils did uh, give Tyce Thompson a chance. And obviously, John Marino and Ryan Graves are now week to week. So Nikita Holtuk and also Kevin Ball have been given an extended uh, stay with the organization. So I asked Jonas Siegenthaler, like, what are some of the things that you're telling Oholtuk and also Ball because uh, they're approaching kind of a, a, a challenge for them just because they got to, like I said, they got to play the Penguins, they got to play the Hurricanes, and uh, you, you're, two of your best defensemen are out. And I know Jonas Sigathar is one of our best defensemen, still active and still healthy, but still it's just like Nikita Oholtuk and Kevin Ball, not to diminish them and their overall skill set, but they are obviously downgrade. So I asked Jonas Siegenthaler, how do you weather the storm in that sort of way? Jonas, I know uh, you guys have been dealing with injuries to your blue line, especially uh, with John Marino and Ryan Graves going down. What are some of the things uh, that you're telling Nikito Holtuk and uh, Kevin Ball to do, especially since it's getting tighter in the Metropolitan Division? Uh, you know, they're good good players, good kids. Uh... Uh, you know they're they're strong physically. Um, you know they just they just got to play their game. Uh, they you know don't lose battles. Uh, I think they did a pretty good job. And uh, um, yeah, you know they're they're pretty good. Uh, they know the system as well, and uh, they look pretty comfortable comfortable out there. Okay, so like we do with every post game recap, I'm going to compare the overall stats and give a letter grade to the Devils organization. Okay, so when looking at the shots on goal category. Once again, it was a little frustrating that the Devils led this category, but still were only uh, able to walk away with a goal. And it, it's a little frustrating considering the fact that the Bruins literally just played the Ottawa Senators just last night. So they're coming off a of back-to-back, and they lost them in OT. So I'm just like, there's really no excuse for a Devil. So shots on goal differential, 31-27 to 27 in favor of the Devils. Face-off percentage, 62% to 39% in favor of the Bruins. Power play, Bruins were 0-3, for 3, Devils were 0-2. for 2. Hits 18 to 15 in favor of the Bruins. Blocks 20 to 8 in favor of the Bruins. Giveaways 17 to 16 in favor of the Devils. So throughout the entirety of the game, before I give a letter grade, it seems like the Devils and their overall defense has stepped up a little bit because I noticed a lot less of two-on-one opportunities uh, given up by the Devils. And it seems like their defense has stepped up a little bit. So Yes, they have a few blunders here and there, but it seems like the defense is a lot more assertive, and you definitely do need that with Marino and Graves being out. So I asked Siegenthaler in that regard, it's like, what are some of the things that they've been working on, and what are some of the improvements that they've been making throughout the entirety of this uh, just rough stretch of games? So here was his answer. Seems like you guys are uh, making less mistakes in, in terms of giving up odd man uh, rushes. Uh, what are some of the things you guys are going to continue to work on as uh, you approach uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins and also the Carolina Hurricanes? Uh, yeah, I mean, they're two good teams. Um, we know how they play. Uh, it's not easy against them, but, uh, you know, uh, we like we, we had a couple or troubles uh, with those odd man rushes. Uh, Couple couple games ago, and uh, you know we I think we kind of fixed that uh, a little bit, and uh, uh, yeah, now there's different stuff to fix, and uh, yeah, we just gotta at the end we just gotta play 60 minutes uh, and make as as, as less uh, mistakes as you can, and uh, you know, and bring the effort. Thanks. So I'm glad the defense has gotten better for the Devils, but only time will tell if it will hold up or not or if they'll continue to just uh, play somewhat solid on the blue line. And quite honestly, I want to see the Devils do a lot less cross ice passes, like try to penetrate just a little bit more, get, get it deep on in. Haven't they learned anything from that Flyers game or, or am I crazy here? So that that's just my overall mindset. So once again, uh, to compare, to compare the overall stats and now to give a letter grade, it's a little bit of a tough one because like I said, it was a hard-fought battle. Devils didn't give an inch, but unfortunately just got very unlucky, ran into Olmark. Uh, so I think it's safe to say they got goalied. And for people who said that they need to finish, yes, that may be true. But at the same time, Olmark is one of the best of the best in the entire league when it comes to goalies. So I'm going to give the Devils a B-. minus, And I think I'm being a little generous here because – once again, yes, there was a lot of issues, and the power play still needs a lot of work. They need to find a way to penetrate and just get get deep on in. But 
that's a discussion for another time. I think the Devils played really well. They came up big when it mattered most. Vitek Vanacek, Nico Kiescher, they had a lot of good looks. They had a lot of good opportunities, like Jonas Siegethor had, had said uh, just moments ago. The defense has improved, and uh, he's trying to help the young guys and just try to uh, get them adjusted. So I think I'll, I'm comfortable giving the Devils a B-. So let me know what you guys think about this game and what, what do you think the Devils should do moving forward, especially since they got the Penguins and Hurricanes. And then come 2023, we'll see what happens. We'll see if the, they'll make the playoffs. But I think uh, a change of the calendar year can do wonders for a team mentally. I don't, like I said, I don't know why, I don't know how, but that's what I've been hearing. So leave a comment down below if you're watching on YouTube. If you're listening on podcast streaming service, hit me up on my personal tour page at TreyMat4 or the show's Twitter page at Locked On Devils. As for today's episode, that's all the time I have for you. So continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day, New Jersey. Go Devils. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks for listening once again.